Hi everyone, welcome to week two. I wanted to give you a short overview of formal outline templates and take a quick look at the sample student speech that I've placed on Blackboard under week two so that you can see what I'm looking for. So Wednesday of this week, I want you to informally submit to me some brainstorming ideas and you'll see in the directions on Blackboard the bullet points that I'm looking for. This doesn't have to be anything formatted in any certain way, just give me an idea of what you're thinking of presenting on. And then for Sunday at midnight, I would like you to use the template that I have showing you on the screen right now, that speech formal outline template, to write your rough draft of your first speech and to submit it to me by midnight on Sunday. I use this template as a way for you to graphically slash visually see the types of components that are required in your speeches. This helps me to assess that you've written the speech correctly and it helps me to see that you know how to get our attention, how to write a thesis statement, how to transition from point to point, etc. So what you're going to do is you're going to use this template that I've placed on Blackboard Again, it's the formal outline template. When you are working on the rough draft version, it's simply a working or rough draft, but you use the same template for this in the finished product. You're then going to start to put your own information in here. So this is an editable document. You might need to open and enable editing on your word processing program. And then you're going to start writing everything out as you would say it. Um, some confusion that often lies in this type of outline and public speaking. I want you to envision that you are writing your speech out like you would an essay. So you're writing everything out completely using complete sentences, good grammar and spelling and punctuation, etc. And that is what you give to me and that is what I grade. However, there's a separate component on all of your speeches that I grade for your delivery. So I look for things like eye contact, inflection, articulation, animation, things of that sort. So I grade the content of your speech using this formal outline, then I grade a portion of your speech on your delivery itself, but you don't speak from this outline. This is not your speaking outline. You construct this first, again, as you would an essay almost, everything written out, then you use this to write your own keyword note cards, um, or, excuse me, you use it to write your own note cards, or you can use the keyword outline that I've placed on Blackboard as well. Note cards are just those small sheets of paper that you can purchase. If you don't want to go out and buy note cards, you can fold a piece of paper over. That's fine. And uh, the keyword outline is just one page bulleted of what you plan to say. The key to using a keyword outline is that you are delivering in an extemporaneous fashion, which means that you are speaking conversationally to us using minimal notes. So you know the content well enough that you don't really need to rely on your notes, you don't need to read your notes, but that you want to have them there, them there as, a, as a crutch, if you will, and to make sure that you are going in the order that you'd like and that you're hitting all of your points. Another thing to remember is even if you don't say everything that you intended to say in your speech, your audience is not necessarily going to know that. I will look at it when I grade your speech, but if you miss a small thing, I'm not counting that against you. Because again, you're practicing enough that you're familiar with and comfortable with your content that you don't have to read it to us. Those are two big things that I look for when I grade speeches and when I teach speech is that you are speaking conversationally or extemporaneously. You are making good contact with your audience. You're treating us like friends in a conversation more than uh, reading to us from a teleprompter and that in order to do that you are making good eye contact with us. So it's a little different in the online speech world where you don't have the advantage of having different people around uh, different areas of the room, but I do want you to focus on looking at the camera and not at your sheet of paper and really connecting with the people who are watching your video. So keep those things in mind as you start to draft your your rough draft of speech one. So you will go through again, put all the information that you need. You might find that you only need two main points for this first speech. So if you don't need a third, just leave that out. And this bibliography means that you're citing outside work. And I'm assuming for, for this speech, since you're talking about yourself, you're probably not going to be doing research. So if you're not citing a source, don't worry about that part for now. I also wanted to show you, I have put on Blackboard a sample student speech that I, um, have provided some commentary on, please do look that over so you get an idea of what former students have done for this speech and the way that the speech is laid out. And additionally, some of the comments that I gave the student to make it 
a little bit um, better. This is the rough draft. I gave this feedback in the margins for her to revise and perfect that final speech. So this week you're focusing on brainstorming ideas for speech one, writing a rough draft of speech one, and submitting both of those to me for my review and some comments. If you have questions, as always, please let me know. Thanks.